for the moms who raised us up, gave us love, and made us strong. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost, but never given up. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who tirelessly and courageously learned how to do this on their own. For the stepmoms and the stand-in moms who rose to the occasion and loved us well. For the working moms, the stay-home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms, thank you for teaching us how to walk, how to learn, and how to make a difference. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For comforting us when we felt alone and afraid. For lifting us up when others put us down. For the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties. For the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. Thank you for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you. We honor you. We remember you today. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. Can you guys stand and join us? We got a special song for you guys today for Mother's Day.
because he knew I needed you. Why don't you say hello to somebody around you and then go and take a seat, if you would. I want to go ahead and say a prayer um, before we get going. So, Father in heaven, um, we just come to you and we are grateful today. Grateful as we should be every single day uh, for your love, for your uh, just the provision that, that is so faithful and so true. And we thank you for being a God who loves and cares for us. And we thank you for being a God who, who dreamt up and gave us the blessing of moms. And, and so, Father, we pray and thank you today uh, for, for our mothers and, and for the moms in this room. And, and, Father, we pray for people. I know a lot of times in holidays it's a day of celebration, a day of remembrance, um, a day of joy. But also sometimes, Father, on days like this, it's a day of sadness and a day of some reminders that are just tough. And so I pray for people that have lost their, their moms. Pray for the people that, that moms maybe just didn't fill the role that, that they should have. Um, pray for moms that, for, for women that want to be moms and have not had that, uh, that, that blessing yet. Um, but, Father, just for people that are hurting in the room, I just give a, a few moments for them to just uh, lift up their prayers to you. And Father, we thank you for the example that so many women have set and, and the example of sacrifice and, and unconditional love that, that you are the author of and that you have ordained. And so God, just help us today to celebrate, um, to remember what you have done on our behalf and just your goodness and your greatness. And we give you all the praise and glory and honor this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, morning, I'm Herc Noblet, one of the pastors. Hey, thank you, Dan. Appreciate that, man. Uh-huh. That's good. Hey, real quick, we should say a prayer for the blues. Hey, we don't do this very often, but can we boo our pastor here a little bit? Uh, he's oh, a, have, have, a Look, have a little faith. Okay? Have a little faith. Okay, that's it's right. They're gonna be all right. So, but um, do you have any? Do you want to tell my, them who my, you are? My name's Tom Mowick, our guest. We're glad you're here today. Listen to him for the next few minutes, and then you'll be able to listen to the smarter brother later on during the message. I got a lot of things I could say, but it's Mother's Day. We're just going to keep going on. So, um, so hey, if you're visiting with us today, we're glad you're here. And we would love for you to go either to the, um, to the information desk right out front or a room across the hallway called the Connect Room. And you can go in there. They'll give you a packet, answer any questions you might have, give you some information on the church. And they'll also hook you up with a T-shirt for you and anybody that's come with you this morning. So we'd love for you to do that. And then a couple of announcements just for the people that are new, guests. Hey, visiting. can I say something real quick? Is he ever, just, why, why do you just, ask my permission? Just, just You're going to. You know, we gave away 38 t-shirts last week. That's because that's you guys did a great job inviting. So keep going. That's it. Right. Okay. I don't, I've forgotten where I'm at, but whatever. So a couple of announcements. One, we don't take an offering during the service. So again, if you're visiting with us, just sit back, enjoy the service. Got a real practical message. Sorry about the messenger this morning, but that's okay. <laughs> and, um, but it's going to be a great, a great morning. So just sit back, enjoy the service. But if Oak Bridge is your home, you guys know where the joy boxes are at. We say that every week. And then also, we don't take communion together in the room this morning. But there's a room behind us called the Reflection Room. You can go in there. You can pray, have people pray for you. Write out your prayer requests that people will pray over all week long because we believe that prayer is powerful and effective and it's just a weapon that we probably don't use near enough so would love for you to do that and then I am going to run through announcements super quick they should be in your bulletin or on the website but one next Saturday morning we have our men's breakfast annual monthly men's breakfast that starts at 7 a.m. great breakfast great time of fellowship would love for you to stop by and do that next sat next Sunday as well during the second service if you're new just been recently visiting and have a lot of questions about how we do 
church, why we do things the way we do, how we're governed, all those things. Want to just meet some of us. Um, I'm going to be running a class called Explore Oak Bridge at 11 o'clock. It's going to be over at the Care Center, I believe, unless we have a lot of people sign up and it'll be over here, but I'll let you know that. But you can sign up on the, online for that. All these things, you can do that. Then Katie wanted me to mention, it's amazing, but VBS is coming up around Katie the runs Oak Bridge Kids, yeah. Yeah, so you can go again onto the website. They need lots of volunteers. Um, you can sign your kids up, and there's information actually you can get from Katie after the service as well. And she said that if you sign up to volunteer, your kids go free, whatever that means. Okay, so you can do that. And then um, also next weekend, and this isn't your bulletin, but we were originally going to have a retreat for our students from, from 7th through 12th grade. And that kind of the, the place wasn't available. But we're having a weekend filled with activities. On Friday night, we've rented out a bowling alley. On Saturday, we're having like a scavenger hunt and blow-ups and all kinds of stuff. And then we're encouraging all the students to come Sunday morning up here to church in, in lieu of that, that retreat. So you can sign up for that online. They'll also be sending out in, more information on that. And then you wanted to mention Yeah, on Mother's jewelry. Day, we have Mosaic Arts team who does almost all the artwork around the building. If you're in the kids' area, they did all that. But they made they've been making these brooches that say shalom which is the hebrew word for peace which is what jesus would have used they've been making brooches to say peace and jesus and hope and so forth and uh they had soldering guns out painting everything and i thought wow these are going to cost an arm and a leg so then they i speak to the mosaic arts team leader bernie yesterday and i said what did you do that for and she says because some kids need to buy their mom a present for mother's day so they priced all these ten dollars and below i thought they're going to be about 25 bucks a piece i mean honestly so here's kind of the deal uh, if you've got a kid and you want to be make them really feel good, bring them by that table, uh, buy one of the items that are there, and just tell them it's for Mother's Day, and uh, every, all the proceeds they're donating to Oak Bridge Kids Ministry. So I think it's just, just awesome of them. It's good. Hey, you know, our, our mom passed away, what was it, three or four or five years ago? Is that right? Now it's gone, it's gone by fast yep. since then. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some things that I never heard her say. I mean, she never said these things. You agree? I mean, there's some things that we never heard her say. Yeah, of course. Oh, I, mean, I, I, I want to show. Of course, I there are some things we didn't hear I her say. I want to show yeah. you a video that are some of the things I never heard my mom say, and maybe you never heard your mom say either. So turn your eyes towards the screen. I'm so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look, an empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed. You're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull out our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! Ah! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. Somebody want to come use the bathroom while I'm in here? That's a little too perfect, I think. Why don't you guys stand and join us as we go to worship this morning? I was 
God, we're so thankful to be here today, to raise your name. And God, we're so thankful for this special day that we celebrate our mothers. God, and all that they do for us. Mothers that are already gone to heaven, mothers that are still here on earth, and mothers to be. God, we thank you for them. And God, I just ask that every mother that is listening today or that is in this room, God, that you bless today. And just make this a special day for them, God. We thank you. We thank you for our mothers, God. And we give you all the glory. Amen. You can take a seat. Hey, since I know on Mother's Day is a day that uh, we got a lot of guests. And uh, I'm glad that you showed up for your mom. It, it honored her. It was a good thing to do. And I'm glad that your moms twisted their arm to show up today. That is, as you get older, it's, it's weird, but you really want to be with your family uh, and share important things that are important to you with them. Um, so here's the point. I tried giving a message that I promised, I missed last year giving this message, but I'd made a promise that I was gonna give this message at least once a year because I believe it's that important. So if you're here today and you say, you know what, I don't know about this God stuff, I don't know about this Jesus stuff, I'm just here because I love my mama. Okay, that's great. And what I'm hoping is, is that you'll still find something today that will help make you uh, live a life that's better, uh, that uh, honors your mother more, and I think you will if you just listen. And, it, and this, this message isn't for people that are like 45 or 30 or 50. It's, it's really uh, for every age and stage of life. But certainly if you're 14, 15, 16, 17 and can get this information um, now and learn to apply it, your, your life will be better for it. There's no question about it. Then I also wanted to say this. This message, you're going to want to make it about you. And I don't want you to make it about you. I want you to make it about others. I want you to be thinking of others when we get to the main points of this message. So a couple questions when I start off the, at, at the very beginning. Any of your brothers or sisters different from you? Raise your hand if your brothers or sisters, and I, hold on, let me just say this. Raise your hand if your brothers and sisters are like way different than you. Raise your hand. Yeah, isn't, isn't that crazy? You know my brother Herc, whom I love and have great respect for. He's my younger brother. I have an older brother, Steve. He's a lot more laid back than I am. I have younger sister, Billy Joe. And we're all three different. There's some things we share, but, you know, at times you'd go, you know, you guys are from the same mom and dad, and, and we'd say, yeah, but they're just totally different. Some people are more talkative. Isn't this right? Some people work harder. How many of you are the harder worker person in your family? Raise your hand. Yeah, point to the person that's not. No, don't do that. Don't do that. No. <laughs> some of you are more generous. Some of you send those caring cards, you know, where you have the brother or sister that says, good, they're taking care of being nice to everybody for us. They send the card. Some of you guys have, uh, you do anything for anyone. You might have a brother or sister that's like that. Some of you are huggers, and some of you are go, mm, no, right? Stick away. How many of you guys uh, have kids that are totally different? Raise your hand. I mean, like, it's crazy. You have one kid, and you think, well, my next kid's going to be just like this. And it's like, no, polar opposite, right? Like, not even close. Uh, it's, it's crazy in that area. A couple things I wrote down were uh, some of them are emotionally different. Some of them, if they, if they cut their knee, 
One of them says, that's no big deal. Another one says, I got to go to the hospital, right? They're terrible. Uh, there's rules followers and there's rules breakers. I love to break rules. That's one of my sin problems that just naturally, if you tell me stop, I want to say go. If you say don't go there. Anybody, anybody, do I have any fellow rule breakers in here? It's not a great trait to have. You've got to overcome it, but, but I understand that. Then there's rules followers. They drive me crazy. Just so you know, when I'm up here during the week, I'm by myself. Do you know where I park? In the handicap spot. <laughs> kind of do. That's really. Um, you've got some brothers or sisters that are laid back and then some that are aggressive. You've got some that are just clean freaks and others that are messies. Everybody's so different. So I wrote same family yet different in so many ways. Yet they're not different in one way. Every person, whether you're the messy or you're the clean, whether you're the outgoing or whether you're the quiet, every single person needs love. Now that's universal. That is, they say music is the universal language. It's really not. It's really love. Every, every place you go, if you rob somebody of love, if you feel like they don't feel loved, you have a problem. And when people feel like they feel loved, it gives you extra wind to your sail. It gives you more pep in your step. It gives you more hope. It is, you know, it is really what makes the world go round. So here we have a problem then, and I'm going to read something that was written 3,000 years ago. And since, the, uh, since we think the Bible's timeless, its message is always timely. This was written 3,000 years ago, and it's so wise today and so true um, but it's a difficult passage to teach about parents, Proverbs 22, 6. And I remembered it a different way, which I'm going to say it in a second, but here's what Proverbs 22, 6 says. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not turn from it. I, I memorized it by train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when they're old, uh, they will not turn away from it. So the point about this message I want you to read, and you might have missed it, train, start off a child in the way what? They should go. He or she should go. This is individual, meaning parenting would be easy if you just said, this is how we parent, but every kid is different. So the writer didn't have a psychological degree, didn't have a uh, therapist degree. The writer of this wrote 3,000 years ago, you need to train up every child, every person in their way he or she should go. And you need to teach them the value system. And when they're old, they won't run away from that. They'll understand if you love them individually. That's really what this is saying. And it's a, it's a classic mistake that sometimes parents make. Say, well, I raised them all the same. And I said, that's just your problem. Can't raise them all the same. And it, that's why parenting is so doggone hard. Amen? Because every kid's different. So today, and, and I'll even say this. For some of you that are young, I want you to be able to cut your parents slack because they may not have known this. And if they would have known this, I think they would have applied it. And maybe you didn't feel loved, and I'm going to try and unlock some reasons why maybe you didn't feel loved, even though they would have said to your parents that they loved you wildly. So today is a free therapy session for all of us. Deal? It's a free wisdom session for all of us. So if you're a guest today, you should be able to walk away with something that I believe is the most valuable truth you're going to hear this year. All right. So that's where we're going to go. Um, I was thinking about uh, our kids. One kid's birthday is a big deal, and another kid doesn't care about it at all. One kid likes to read by themselves, and the other one needs to have friends around to play with. One kid likes to pet the dog, and the other doesn't even know the dog exists. It's crazy how they're, they're so different, and yet they all need, say it with me, love. 1 Peter 4.8, this is the right-hand man of Jesus, walked with Jesus for three years, and here's what he wrote in 1 Peter 4.8, uh, 2,000 years ago, 100 generations ago he wrote this. Above all, above all, you know what above all means in Greek? Above all, that's what it means, it, it's the highest, okay? <laughs> above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. In other words, I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, you're going to make mistakes parenting. But love is so powerful, it's like that great Band-Aid. It's like that great salve that can heal something. If you learn to love fully with wisdom, 
with understanding, then you can fix a lot of the things that have been thrown upon other people, either by you or by, just by the world or by themselves. Um, I talked a little bit about my dad if you've been going here, but my dad grew up on a farm, and uh, he passed away a couple years ago. And I used to ask my dad, I said, Dad, tell me about my grandma and grandpa. I knew them, and they lived back in Indiana, and we'd go back, we moved out here in third grade, so I'd go back there and see them pretty regularly. But I don't have a lot of memories of them because I'd only see them once or twice a year. We'd go to the farm, and my dad said, um, my mom and dad were, and if you're a farmer, I'm not trying to step on your toes, he said, but they were like farmers that age. In other words, if they, had an old, they had a horse that we had raised it for 20 years. The horse's name was Sis. And I came back, I remember coming back, uh, and I asked my dad, I said, Dad, where's the horse Sis at? And wasn't that Grandpa's horse? And he said, yeah. I said, where's Sis at? And he said he sold Sis to be turned into dog food. Now I said, why? He says, because she's becoming too expensive to take care of. So my grandpa looked at animals as just a commodity, not as something that you loved and treasured and valued. So, you know, I asked my dad what he did for fun growing up on the farm. He said, I worked. And I said, what do you mean you worked? He goes, well, feeding the chickens was a lot more fun than slopping the pigs. But he said, we worked. We, you know, there was no play. So then I asked the question, I said, were your mom and dad good parents? And he said, uh, probably not by the standard Tom that you would use or that I would use. He said, my mom and dad, I'd never heard them tell me they love me. I said, you mean like never? And he said, no, they were just stoic, straightforward. This is what we do. I provide. And uh, there is, that's just the way that it was. We work hard and, and that's the way that it is. My dad had three brothers and three sisters. And my dad always had an affinity for his older brother, Max. And my dad's not coming from this background. He wasn't overly emotional. He wasn't, didn't, he said he loved us, but he wasn't uh, huggy feely. It wasn't none of that. I just knew he did by his actions and, and by he said it now and then, didn't overly say it. But I knew my dad loved Max. And uh, he would talk about Max quite a bit. And do you know why I think my dad talked about Max? Because I think Max spoke the language of love to my dad. What my dad didn't get from his dad and his mom, I think he got from his older brother, Max. And I think Max helped him through a lot of things. Here's a key point. Love can be a feeling, but it's always an action. Love can be a feeling. You can feel like you're loved. You can feel that way. And sometimes that, that's true, and sometimes it's deceiving, but it is always an action. You can always tell uh, the real story by the, the real action. And that's, that's something we've got to uh, understand, get in our mind. This is where we're trying to go a little bit today to where we can put love into action. Here's a quote from Mother Teresa. The hunger for love is much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. She said, it's so much harder to find the, the hurting of the world, the lowest of the low, the people that have been mistreated. It's easy to give them food and water. It's very hard to show them love, the love that they need, to feel the holes in their heart and to give them uh, a reason for hope. So the season of life I'm in right now is a reflective time period. I realize I'm in the fourth quarter. Uh, I know I have a lot more days uh, behind me than I do in front of me. And I think it's a good advantage for a lot of us that uh, are this age um, because I'm able to boil some things down that aren't important and they kind of go away. And you know, really, I've, I've, I've tried to, I, I try to give myself, okay, what's the statement, Tom, that you want to, if God gives you 15 or 20 more years, what is your statement to be? And it's this, it's, I want to love well. I want to love my family well. I want to love my friends well. I want to love our church well, my church family. Uh, I want to love them as the best that I can. And I believe this is the time period for many of us where if you learn to love well, your influence goes up and it's the most influential time of your life. But only because that you learn to love. So that's where we're going. We're going to talk about five key things that can teach us how to love better. And uh, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, before I get there, says this. For the spirit God gave us, now I'm speaking to Christians, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. In other words, God came into you and he gave you his spirit. He says, look, he says, I want you to, to have a bit more self-control. I want you to learn how to love and apply it. And I want you to have a bit more boldness. 
And for almost every person that follows Christ, those three things go up. They're a little bit more bold about their faith. They learn to love a little bit more. They have a little bit more self-control in their actions. And that's just a gift of God. So we brought this pump up on stage to show you. If you learn these five principles, you can fill somebody's gas tank. You can fill it. If you don't learn these, you can drain somebody's love tank. Let me just say this again. Did I say gas tank the first time? All right. You don't have a gas tank, so let's go it this way. You can fill somebody's love tank. So imagine all of you got a, a meter, and it's empty and full, and your love meter goes like this. Your wife drains it, she fills it. Your kids drain it, they fill it. Your husband drains it, he fills it. You want to be on the side that fills love tanks. You know that you can think of a person in your mind, if I said this, think of a person, don't say it, all right, that drains your love tank. Like, you're, like when you've, you're glad, okay, I'm glad this is over, and they're gone. I'm glad to get out. That's a tough place to be. You want to be one of the ones that fills love tanks. And, and I've definitely, if you're a non-Christian, live how you want to live. If you're a Christian, you have to fill tanks. Jesus says, this is how you'll know him, by how you fill tanks. That's what he's talking about, how you love people. So I'm going to quote, I'm going to quote from a book uh, today, read it, give you some ideas from it. That's called The Five Love Languages. And it's in the bookstore. And, and as strange as it is, I just decided to preach this message two days ago. I had another message prepared for Mother's Day, prayed, and I just felt this is what somebody needed to hear today. So I don't know if it's for you, then understand God wanted you to have it. And, uh, but there's five things that, that I could give you scriptural references where there are themes through the Bible. None of these five are directly mentioned, but this Christian author named Gary Chapman, who's a Christian psychologist, he found these five themes run through uh, everybody that he spoke to. Th these things either fill a love tank or they drain a love tank. And some of the people that drain people's love tanks are loving people. They just didn't know they were doing it. They had no idea. You ever, you ever filled up a uh, raft, and as you're filling it up, uh, you don't know there's another hole. It's going out. You think, and you, you're done. You go, what's going on? And you fill it up again. That's sometimes how parents do it. They want to love their kid. They do love their kid. But man, it just doesn't feel that way. And it's the same way with kids. So you guys ready to go? You want to learn? Want to read an entire book in uh, 25 minutes right now? That's really what we're going through. All right. As I read these, they're in your notes. We hand out a thing for you. Uh, I, I want you not just to think of what your love language is, in other words, what fills your tank, but I want you primarily, like I said at the beginning of this message, to think about other people. This shouldn't be a selfish message. This should be a message that you should be thinking about the people you're with right now. How can I love them more by learning to fill their tank? That's where I want us to go. In the process, you'll understand what you need, but I believe, and can I just say this? I'll make, a, I'll make reference to a story that I think saved my relationship with my son, Matt. That's how important this, this love thing is. All right, so here we go. First love language is words of affirmation. And words of affirmation are verbal compliments, words of appreciation. They're encouraging words. Uh, they're kind words. They're words of forgiveness. They're humble words. Uh, people have the love language of words of affirmation. They don't like demands. For me, this is my primary love language, and I want to say this too. Some of these, you've had a primary love language. All of them fill your tank, but one of them really does the job more than others, in general, for most of us. These love languages, by the way, can float from age and stage in life. What filled your tank when you were 15 isn't the same thing that works for you when you're 55. So I want you to understand that. And uh, so words of affirmation, those are kind words. They're, they're right words. They're notes. Uh, they're words of forgiveness. So if somebody comes up to you and you have the words of affirmation and, and they say, look, I'm sorry, I forgive you, they just fill you back up. And the reverse would also be true. When people don't say those things, they drain your tank. So my dad's love language was words of affirmation. That's why he hated it. Remember I told you a couple weeks ago that he hated teasing? See, he didn't hear his son's or his daughter, or his wife teasing him. He heard them saying, Bill, we don't love you. And it drained him. It made my dad a better man when we affirmed him. And uh, uh, that's my love language. So uh, you wouldn't know it, but every card that I've ever been given, every note that you've, you've written me, I've got in a box in my basement. It's crazy, and I, I don't know why I keep it. Uh, 
other than to go back and read them now and then. It just makes me feel better when I, when I read these notes. So those things are important. So if you're a note giver and you know a person's got words of affirmation, you can write something kind. Uh, I've got a person that goes to our church. She's at Oak Bridge City now. And uh, her mom sent a lot of letters and said it's her 30th birthday. Would, would, would all of her friends send her words of affirmation? Would her send her kind notes? And, and it's not something I love writing notes, but it's something I'm going to do because I know what it's going to mean to her. My son, Matt, who's also got the love language of words of affirmation, we were probably, I guess he was maybe uh, six, seven years old. We were out and back, and I have a, a, a concrete basketball court in my backyard. And we were, it was one of the first things we put in. It's essential, by the way. Uh, and uh, we were playing hockey out there and just, you know, running around, not with, uh, just in tennis shoes, and I would score on him, and I'd say, yeah, Matt, look at that. You can't stop your dad. Look at that. And he's a seven-year-old little kid, right? But I've told you before that I have a, a problem with competitiveness, and it leaks into the sin area because I can't shut up. So I always want to trash talk. I understand that. That's just kind of how I'm wired. So I'm going, yeah, Matt, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. And as I noticed, this energy level was going down. Finally, he stopped as a seven-year-old and said, hey, Dad, why are you talking to me like that? And I realized, oh, man, if I keep doing this at age eight, nine, teenage years, I'm going to drain his tank, and he's going to think I don't love him when I would die for him. Amen? With Matt... I never, ever, ever had to think about punishing him in any other way except saying, Matt, I'm disappointed. Don't do that. That killed him. You didn't have to worry about spanking, nothing. You didn't have to worry about, and I'm not, it's not an argument about spanking or not spanking. This is an argument about understanding him. His words carried weight. Matt, stop that. Well, I'm not happy. That just killed him. We had to watch that. So just as a quick thought for you, I want you to think about somebody in your mind who you know words make a difference, notes make a difference. And I'm asking you to fill their tank today by writing them a note or calling them, or if they're with you, telling them, I am proud of you and I love you. I haven't missed a day yet with my three grandkids here in St. Louis. I can't do it to my two in Atlanta. But I tell my grandkids every time I see them, bar none, and I see them all the time, Grandpa loves you and God loves you. And for uh, certainly for one of the three, their love language is words of affirmation, and I know that they're understanding that. Uh, the second thing is quality time. This is the number one love language by far for most people and certainly for women. And um, it's quality time. And here's what quality time is. It's togetherness. It's focused attention not close proximity. It's, it's not getting at the table and everybody pulling out their phone. Quality time today is harder today for people to feel because of the social media. You're there with somebody and they're speaking to somebody else and it's like you're not in the room. Can I get an amen on any of this? And if you're the quality time person, you understand what I'm saying. It's focused attention. It's not being in the same room. It's not your husband watching the ball game and saying, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, that's good. No, that's, I find myself doing it. And this is, again, not one point at you. This is three point back at me. But these are things we have to remember. Christian, you're the one I'm speaking to now. This is you have to learn to love. Let the rest of the world off the hook. We can change the world if we learn to love fully and fill people's tanks, whether they think like us or believe like us. It is the right thing to do. Quality time, focused attention, not close proximity. It's also quality conversation. It's shared thoughts and feelings. It's not you being in a room and one person giving, 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 and you giving nothing back. That is not quality time. Unfortunately, opposites attract. And I'll put it in Christian terms. The Dead Sea, which is in Israel, the Dead Sea, will ne normally marry a babbling brook. So you may be the Dead Sea, and you go, look, dude, I got like 100 words that I want to say today. Like, 
that person has like 10,000. And, but you know what? Can I just say this? Is love worth fighting for? Are they worth fighting for? You know, I mean, that's, you got a kid. You know, you see it all the time. Mommy, 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 listen, 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 mommy, mommy, listen. You finally go, okay. Here's the kid. Okay. There'll be a day where if you don't listen, they won't be saying mommy, 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 daddy, daddy, daddy anymore. And there'll be a time where, you, where they, they want you to hear them, and you'll, trust me, when you get older, you'll love those times when it was like that. You'll cherish them. I'm trying to make us wise. God's word makes us wise unto the world. It's timeless. Love overcomes a multitude of sins. You can fix those times where you've not paid attention. And I understand hearing mommy, 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 daddy, 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 8,000 times can, can uh, drive you crazy from the little babbling brook, but that's okay. You have to understand that that's just part of it. Quality activities. Plan out some things. Go for a walk. Go for a trip to the zoo. Go out to dinner. It's the one thing I like about Facebook. I watch some of my friends as they're, as they're aging, and it seems to me like they're spending a lot more quality time together because they realize that that does something to somebody's tank, and I applaud them. And for you young people right now, I'll give you an example. My daughter Katie and Jeremy, who I'm, I love dearly, um, they asked the, the grandparents to babysit the grandkids for Monday and Tuesday, and I, we have the grandkids Wednesday and Thursday, and they're going away hiking for four or five days. And if Jeremy uh, put that together, which is my son-in-law, props. Both of them, their love tanks will get what? Filled. That's exactly right. Watch your phone time. Watch your TV time. Watch the computer time. Uh, one-on-ones are important. This is the last thing before I move on. A mother-daughter trip is a great deal. And listen, a father-daughter trip can maybe be more. One-on-one trips, father-son, mother-daughter, mother-son. You can take your kid out and say, look, we're going to do nothing but go down to Crown Candy Kitchen and get an ice cream. That would be phenomenal. I remember one of my earliest memories of my dad He took me to uh, go to Indianapolis to get a morning Sunday paper. It seemed like a terribly long drive, even though we only lived 15 minutes away from Indianapolis. And I remember the song Tuya Clark sang called Downtown. Downtown. Anybody else know it? (laughs) And I remember that. And you know what I also remember is? It's a good memory because I think my love tank got full from it. So it can stick with you for a long time. Third thing. Receiving gifts. And um, before I tell you about receiving gifts, it's, it's, it's not that they're greedy, and it's not that they want a lot of things, and it's not like that, that that's not it. Receiving gifts mean a lot. My grandson, Henry, he's now seven years old. His love language is receiving gifts. And yes, if you ask me, all the people that I'm close to that I know in my family, yes, I know their love languages. Why? Why? You tell me why. Why? I want to love them. I want them to know I love them. I want to fill their tank. So yeah, I try and speak those. I, that, shouldn't we? Yes or no? Yeah, we can. Anyway, so my grandson, Henry, uh, he's got his love language is receiving gifts. Every time he comes over to our house, he's like a dog carrying in a stick. He'll bring over a toy, a baseball card, a hockey binder, a skateboard. And, and I realize, and if you buy... My, we've made the mistake of buying my granddaughter Lola something, thinking it's a girl gift. So therefore, Henry and Tripp, my other two grandkids, they don't need anything. And so here, Lola, we got you this little dress. Here's Henry. <laughs> and Grandma goes, no, Henry, I, I saw this little dress here. And Henry goes, oh, no, I fully understand now. He doesn't say that. You know what he says? That's what he says. And then I say, get over it, Henry. No, I don't say that. (laughs) I remember on Henry's fifth birthday, I wrote this down. He was getting presents for his birthday. And uh, this is the fifth love language I'm going to point to in a second. And Grandma, uh, my wife, went over and started to rub his neck. And Henry, as he's opening gifts, look at Grandma, and he says, 
would you stop that? <laughs> you know physical touch is not his love language. We'll get to in a second. <laughs> Gift giving, the visual symbols of love, thoughtful. They need to be cost appropriate. In other words, if you go cheap, they'll understand you went cheap. And it's not that cheap makes a difference. Thoughtful makes a difference. Uh, they reflect effort and care. Uh, they're not necessarily materialistic. That's why I love the mosaic arts thing. Not because we're going to make a lot of money off these $10 necklaces. We're not. All right? But here's why. Some little kids love Tank, who's got uh, receiving gifts, which is, I think I took, is this one right here. They're going to give you a gift, and they're going to feel loved, and they're going to feel they love you. Right? And some mom's going to get something little kid, and her love tank's going to go up. All right. Uh, so you give appropriate gifts. You know what that should be. Another one that, we, that we've made reference to at Oak Bridge, it's why, it's why we think you made a great decision coming today, and every Sunday we think you make a great decision. The gift of yourself. Some of you, the best gift you can. There are no words. There's no present. There's no headstone. There's no book. There's just the gift of you. And say, I'm just here. I love you. I'm just here. No words. You don't even need words. Just sit and be with them. Give them that gift. Une unexpected gifts are especially fulfilling. If it's unexpected for the person that has that love language, um, that's good. Uh, don't miss expected days. Listen to me. If you did not get your mom a Mother's Day gift today, because she said, I really don't want anything, I've got everything, and you believe her love language is receiving gifts, you get your butt out of here quick, and you go to Target. <laughs> all right? And you think, all right, you find something. Flowers are always a good gift, okay? Uh, that's one of them. Don't miss unexpected days. The fourth one, acts of service. And that's doing things you know someone would love you to do. Lifting a burden from them. Asking them the question, what would you like me to do? There are some things with acts of service that the person that has that love language, they won't give you credit for because they expect you to do that all the time anyway. So if you ask the question, how can I help you? What would I? That's what they need to hear. Here's something that I've got. Here's what I can do. It's reexamining your stereotypical roles. So if you think, well, here's the house, so the mom does this. Here's the lawn, so the guy does this. You rethink that. You rethink it because what, what hangs in the balance is love. It's doing some things without being asked. Kids, you listen to me on this one. You can fill your parents' love tank so easy. Just by giving them a gift now and then, by uh, 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 doing something for them, by spending some time with them, by saying something good to them, these are the four languages, you can fill their love tank so high that, listen to this, they will give you anything you want. 25 bucks, the gas tank filled, a free night out, skipping school the next day, all right? You can, now I'm not asking you to manipulate this, but you can if you're a 15-year-old. You understand what I'm saying? Love is so important that you don't do it to manipulate, you do it to love, but it makes people want to serve one another. Amen? When your love tanks down, you don't want to serve anybody. Acts of service. How can I help is a great question. Um, doing what you, not just what you want to do, but what you know would, would fill their love tank. All right. And the final one is, is physical touch. So we've had words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Physical touch is the love language that um, you do not want your daughter to have. <laughs> I don't know any way to say it any other way, all right? If you do, bummer, all right? Um, every study shows held babies become better babies. Held babies become better babies. I'm not so sure if, if you're pregnant, you don't rub your tummy if that baby doesn't come out feeling different. I don't know how that works, but held babies, every study shows, become healthier babies. Physical touch represents an expression of love. And I'm not talking about in the bedroom. Obviously that does, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a pat on the back, an appropriate hug, obviously a, 
between spouses a kiss. Sexual intimacy is part of it. Um, my daughter Katie does not have the love language of physical touch. In fact, if I go to give her a hug, if I want to annoy her, I'll say, oh, Katie, I love you, I love you. <laughs> she, like, wants to throw me out of the house. So those people that don't feel love that way, you can't force it that way. That's why, the, at times, why violation sexually is so much deeper. It drains every bit of love out of Scripture talks about how it's just something to, to watch this thing called touch. It needs to be appropriate. And appropriate at times can be tied into culture. Whereas before you used to come and give somebody a big hug, maybe today it's just not as appropriate. Uh, I'll just say it this way. If a kid has the love language of words of affirmation, you have to watch yelling at them if you're a yeller. If the kid has the love language of physical touch, and you believe in corporal punishment, that's how you, then you may get them to change their behavior, but you'll also get them not to love you anymore. This is, this is love 401. So I thought, you know what, as I'd close, you guys are smart enough to figure out people's love language around you. To help you, when you came in, we gave you a bulletin of the five love languages. We gave you a test you can take it if you're not sure what yours is. But that test is really for you to, to ask other people to copy it and say, look, just, I just really don't even want to be guessing. And sometimes just to watch people and to show signs of love and see how they respond. That person that comes up to me at church, I'm not a big hugger. But the person comes up to me at church, and you know what they say with physical touch? Pastor, I just need a what? A hug. I'll hug them as tight as I can. Because what they're really saying is, I just need some what? Some love. The world's been hard. I need some love. Person that comes in saying they feel worthless, I want them to hear, you're worth the life, death of God's only son. No matter what you've been, what you've said, what you've done. The person that comes in that says the church is just always trying to take stuff from the money. We want to give you the gift of this service, the gift of our compassion, the gift of our, our wisdom, our knowledge about Scripture. We want our, our, our whole place to feel charitable and kind. Sunday, I love when we get together because we can spend some quality time together. I don't know about you, but can I just say this? Isn't this one hour and 20 minutes the most quality time of your week? Yes, by, by right, round of hands, it is, is it? <laughs> now listen, I want to speak to the person that's here today and under duress. The husband, the kid, your mama wants you to come today for one reason and one reason only. She loves you, and she wants to share something that has changed her life with you. She does not think she's better than you. She just believes that the Lord that she serves, and his name is Jesus, is needed by all people to have their love tanks full in a pure and true way. So if she asks you to go to church, cut her some slack. I know of some moms that could care less about what their kid ever does. You don't want that mom. You don't want that one. Romans 5, 8, so I'm thinking about Jesus now. How do these five like weave into this as we get ready to close? Romans 5, 8. We've been in Romans for what? Seven years now? <laughs> in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. God demonstrates his what? His love. He puts love into action. His love for who? For us. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, here's what he's saying. While you were far from me, while you were jacked up against me, while you did things against me, I loved you so much that I put my son on the cross to pay a debt that you owed that you could never pay so I could bring you back to me to be with you forever because I am your father and you are my treasured child. Romans 8, 39. Neither height nor depth 
nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not because of your behavior. If you're here today, I want you to understand, you are loved by God because you are his child, not because you are good. Can I give you this little note? None of us are good compared to God. And yet God counts us so worthy that he gives the most valuable thing his son to pay a debt that we owed. That's a good deal. So I talk about Jesus in the Bible as I read scriptures, we teach scriptures, we learn scripture in small groups as our children learn scriptures. D2, all the kids that were in here at the beginning, they're fifth and sixth graders. Words of affirmation. Jesus says, you're my treasured child. You're my treasured son. You're my treasured daughter. And I love you unconditionally. And until you take your last breath on this earth, I will offer my love and my sacrifice and my life for you to take. And I will trade my righteousness when you stand before God and I'll put it on you. Quality time. If you're a Christ follower, you know that he's here all the time for you. And if you're not, I can tell you there's a couple scripture verses that refer to the fact that God has your hairs numbered. Not just here. Your eyebrows, the ones on your arm. He knows every one of them that you have and that you've lost. He says he has your tears weighed, the tears of joy and the tears of sorrow. Now I like to spend some quality time with my grandkids and my wife and my children and my church. Nothing like God does. He's here with us all the time. He put his spirit in us. Receiving gifts, come on. The gift of his life. He laid down his life. Acts of service. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I took a step off my throne in heaven to come down to serve. If you've got a hole in your heart, he wants to help you heal it. If you're lacking wisdom, he wants to give you more of it. He wants to teach you about it. If you've had a dad or a mom that hasn't been there, he says, I want to fill that gap and teach you that we can heal those holes. Physical touch. This is for the Christ follower in the room now. Haven't you ever just felt like it's like God is sitting there just, just to got his arm around you? It's, it's, it's so physical. It feels so right that he's here hugging you, saying, it's going to be okay. I'm with you. Galatians 2.20 as I close. I've been crucified with Christ. It's me. And I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, today is a day that if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, it's really that simple. It's really understanding that I need God, I need his love in my life, and I'm going to trust in that. I'm going to trust that God loved me enough that he sent Jesus. I don't think anybody on planet Earth argues that Jesus walked the earth. I think the argument is, is why did he come and who he was? And I think the Christ follower says he's one that came to show us how to love God and how to love one another. And God loves you. We have this bridge up here. And on this side, we have some red cloth and some white cloth. If after service you say, I just want to trust Christ, I want to trust that his blood was given out of love for me to take away my sin, his shed blood is sacrificed on the cross, and you come over and you grab a white piece to realize that now you stand before God innocent, righteous before God because of the love of God that he sent his son for that. You can make that decision today. For some of you that aren't ready to make that decision, you keep seeking God's love. Now for all you mamas, just the moms only now, or the moms that want to be moms, or the, or the moms that are moms, even though you don't have children, your moms to other people, you look at me. You keep loving like Jesus. This world can be a harsh place. You make it soft. This world can be a sad place. You make it joyful. This world can be a hurting place. You make it a healing. God works oftentimes through your love. You don't give up on your kids. You stay with them. You stay strong. Amen, moms. Father, we come to you and we praise you. We thank you for this time together. We thank you that we can talk about your son Jesus look at how he modeled love and we can praise him for the love that he showed each of us individually 
God, I pray for the moms. I pray for this gathering that we call Oak Bridge. I pray for the sons and daughters. Dear God, I, I want to come to you with just gratitude for all the moms. What a beautiful, wonderful, amazing responsibility you've given them to show the love of your son, Father. We thank you. I thank you for the wisdom of this writer. I thank you that we can apply these things. I think you can come out of here today with a graduate level love. Help us to apply it, God. Help this love be in action. We love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Hey, let's stand and sing this closing song together full voice, right? Let's do it.
over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak to thank you all for your good attention and I just wanted to encourage you to follow Peter above all love each other deeply because it overcomes a multitude of sins you should be wiser leaving here than coming in put those words into action next week we jump back into Romans and he talks about the role of government so if you want to come in and hear a little controversy jump on in I'm all feet we'll be ready to go happy Mother's Day thanks for coming <laughs>